In the suburbs of Osu stands a building of major historical importance. The Osu Salem Presbyterian Middle Boys Boarding School, built in 1857 by the Basel Mission. It is the first European-style boarding school for African children in the region. Today, this historical monument is in urgent need of conservation. If nothing gets done, it might disappear, and with it, a major landmark of the period following the abolition of the transatlantic slave trade, when Christianity took hold in West Africa. At the beginning of the 19th century, following a wave of evangelical fervor in Northern Europe, Protestant missionaries looked to West Africa as a promised land for new converts. The first mission starts in Sierra Leone, set up by Anglican and Lutheran missionaries. Other small missions are also set up in Nigeria. On the Gold Coast, Catholic and Protestant chaplains have been officiating in the slave fort since the 15th century. But the indigenous population follow traditional religions and Christian influence does not reach beyond the walls of the forts. This is all about to change with the arrival of missionaries from a new Swiss Christian society, the Basel Mission. The best way to understand the school building and the philosophy behind it is to stand in the middle of the central courtyard and look around. The whole school is designed as a closed space. The main classrooms, the teachers' houses and the students' dormitories all face each other. The intention of the Basel missionaries is to create a new Christian community separated from its surroundings, a protected space where the new faith can take root. The first Basel missionaries start arriving at the Christiansborg Castle in 1828, invited by the Danish governor of the former slave fort to run the school for the Euro-African children of the Danish officers. But most of them die of tropical diseases within months of arrival. Today, a cross facing the sea next to the castle commemorates these early missionaries. The only survivor is a Danish minister called Andreas Rees. When he falls ill, he consults a traditional African doctor who cures him, and after he fully recovers, George Lutherot, a Euro-African friend of the mission, advises him to settle inland in the hills at Akropong because of the cooler climate. After several years, Rees fails to win any converts to Christianity and is recalled to Switzerland by the Basel mission, where they devise a new strategy for Africa. Rees travels to the Caribbean to recruit a new group of missionaries in the hope that missionaries of African descent will be better than their white counterparts at converting the indigenous African population to Christianity. These black Christians come from the Moravian Church, the first large-scale Protestant missionary movement present in the West Indies since the 1730s. Most of the new recruits are former enslaved Africans like Alexander Worthy Clerk, born on a Jamaican plantation, or Catherine Margrave, kidnapped as a child from Angola and brought to Jamaica. For some of these new black missionaries, this mission to Africa is a journey to reconnect with their origins. As we can hear in the address they give on their departure to the Guinea coast on the 8th of February, 1843. When we go to Africa, we go not to a foreign country. Africa is our country and our home. Our grandfathers and great-grandfathers were taken from there and brought here. We go there to witness the grace of God, not only to the European, but also to the African.
After their arrival in the Gold Coast, the new missionaries start running the school that has just been built in Osu by the Basel Mission. 150 years later, the exact same building is still standing, dilapidated, but intact. Learning about the architecture of the school, you can start to understand how it was conceived as a little piece of Christian Europe in a so-called heathen Africa. The school is designed by a German master builder. The stone foundations are typical of Danish construction, and the first floor is a timber-framed structure infilled with mud, the kind you would find in southern Germany. The wood used for the building's frame is German pine wood, coming from the forests close to the Baltic Sea. The whole structure was pre-cut in Copenhagen and shipped to Accra. These marks cut into the timber allow the builders to reassemble the structure on site, according to the plans. On the ground floor of the main building, you first enter the assembly hall where the students gathered before their lessons. For the first time, a European-style school is open to pupils not only of Euro-African origin, but also to children from local communities. The students are taught in English and Chi. In the morning, they learn handwriting, history, geography, arithmetic, and religious knowledge. The afternoons are dedicated to the learning of handicrafts, like basket weaving, brick making, and carpentry. In the early days, the school claims that its main duties are to civilize Africans and transform them into good Christians. The pupils are separated from their families and traditional religion, sometimes for months on end. In the words of one of the school's masters, the school is here to snatch the children from perdition. With the school underway, the Basel mission now faces a new problem, how to finance its activities and the construction of new schools and churches in the region. The Basel Mission Trading Company is set up in 1859, in charge of producing and exporting agricultural products to Europe as well as selling European goods on the Gold Coast. The profits of the trade finance the mission's work. A factory opens in Accra, soon followed by a network of warehouses and shops in the southern regions of the country. Better roads are built to transport goods from the interior to the coast, and local customers get used to purchasing imported goods. The influence of the Basel mission expands. Climbing a wooden staircase, you access the first floor of the building where a wooden veranda leads to several large classrooms. Looking at the way the space is organized, you understand how the boarding school worked and one of the main reasons behind its success. The teachers live in close proximity to where the students study, sleep and worship. Strict discipline can be maintained at all times and a strong sense of common purpose and identity is built. Twenty years after the start of Osu Asylum School, a few hundred students have gone through its strict program. Some of them have continued their studies in the new seminaries built by the Basel Mission and entered priesthood. The small number of new African Christians brought up with Western values are becoming the core group that disseminates the Christian faith in the larger society.
But the missionaries are not the only Europeans to exert a strong presence in the region. In 1874, following a long period of military expansionism, the British declare the Gold Coast a crowned colony. On the 5th of November of that year, all enslaved Africans are declared free. As these pictures of liberated enslaved Africans show, thousands of men, women and children walk out of farms, homes and plantations and try to start a new life. Some seek refuge with the Basel Mission, which is known for its abolitionist stand on one hand and on the other hand is accused of having used slave labour on its plantations and exploiting unpaid child labour, including that of its own students. Throughout the 19th century, missionaries, colonial troops and merchants justified their increased presence with the same message. Deliver Africa from the evils of slavery and civilize the continent. The nations who created the transatlantic slave trade now present themselves as the liberators. A decade later, 14 countries gather in Berlin to decide the fate of the African continent. All the former leading slave trading nations take part in the conference and carve out Africa into new territories under their control. Together they will start the colonization of the 20th century. The Osu Asylum School kept its high educational standards over time, and many illustrious figures from the colonial period and the early years of independent Ghana were educated here. Today, the school has expanded and has been extended with modern buildings, but parts of the old structure are still being used to accommodate the large number of pupils. After nearly 150 years, the original buildings are rapidly deteriorating. If they are not preserved, the centuries-old wooden structures will begin to collapse and the whole building will have to be taken down. With it, another landmark of a bygone era will be gone forever.